Value avalanche. Value avalanche. What's up everybody, John Anthony here. Today we're gonna to cover a video of hidden camera footage showing me walk up to a stranger on the street, talk to her very briefly, and then convince her to come back to my apartment within about 30 seconds after talking to her. I wanna encourage everyone, down below, please subscribe if you haven't already subscribed and click the bell button. That will give you a notification for every single new video I put out. So these videos will be engaging, they'll be fun. I'm gonna keep the, the content top notch, okay? Better than anyone else in the niche, better than anyone in the industry. And I'm gonna be doing a lot of these cool breakdowns, giving you the inside secrets. I was holding back before on YouTube, not giving away all these amazing things, even though I was giving away a lot of really good stuff. But now it's just fucking value avalanche. Majority of this interaction is actually the walk back to the apartment. Now, this is a rare situation. When I teach on my live programs how to take a girl home, I give guys instructions from start to finish of everything they need to be saying and doing and how to structure everything. But what I call this particular situation is the green light path, okay? So what this means is, from the minute you approach the girl, which is called the open, all the way through to taking her home, right? It's very smooth and there's no objections, okay? So typically, in a normal interaction, for the majority of the cases, when you walk up to a stranger, the girl could have like an issue with how you approach her in the beginning, okay? So you come up to a girl, you say, my token opener is, hi, I wanted to meet you real quick, okay? Hi, I wanted to meet you real quick, what's your name? And a lot of times she might be like, whoa, whoa, or like they're not interested, or she pretends like she didn't hear you. Any number of things can happen there. Also, the cock blocks, the friends can come in and get involved. But in this particular situation, you'll see I approach a girl on the street and she's by herself, all right? So there's no cock blocks around. I don't need to move her out of a bar or move her out of a nightclub in order to leave. She's already on the street, okay? And I happen to be living in this particular situation about 10 minutes from where I met her on the street. But as you're gonna see, I ask her to come back with me, okay? I frame things that we should go hang out, okay? And there's no objections. I find out her logistics, and we'll go over all those little details in the video. But it's important to note that this is like the ideal case. Okay, so I always talk about this in my live programs. That's why I wanted to start off with this in my, as I start breaking down a whole bunch of these hidden camera footages over the next bunch of weeks and months. I want to start off with the ideal case, which is what I call the green light path. And that's going to be no objections from start to finish. All very, very smooth. All right, so let's take a look at the footage. All right, so I see the girl on the street. Okay, I decide that I wanna to talk to this particular girl, but I see that she's on her phone. All right, so that presents a particular problem. You don't wanna be this like little creepy guy that's coming on the side and kind of like lingering like, oh, hey, like I wanna to talk to you, but I'm not committing to it. And she could see you and be like, what the fuck is this guy doing? And it's immediately gonna make you look like creepy. Your value is gonna to start to drop, etc. So what I do in this particular situation and what I usually do in most situations like this is I will fake a phone call. All right, so you just take out your cell phone you pretend like you're talking on the phone and all of a sudden it's not creepy, okay? Because you come into her field of vision and you're not just like standing there lingering like, well, who the fuck is this guy? Instead, you happen to be on your own phone call and you're kind, of gauge, you're kind of listening to what she's saying and you're kind of gauging like, is she almost done with the phone? When can I approach? All right, so let's take a look at how I move in on the territory and what I do next. Yeah. Where are we headed? Yeah. Can I meet you real quick? Okay. Are you waiting for all your friends? They left me, so... Oh, do they? Yeah. We're trying to figure out where to go. Okay, so I see her get off her phone. Okay, I'm a little bit ahead of her. I see her get off her phone. That's when I end my call, right? Okay, I'm taking the phone away from my hands. So now she sees, okay, here's this guy. 
He's off his phone. I'm, she's still not paying that much attention to me yet, and I'm not really setting off any red flags. I'm just like another stranger on the street. Then I turn back to my cameraman, and we also had another friend out with us, and I say, hey, are you guys ready? Right? She just sees me casually talking to my friends. And then I turn and address her, and I say, hey, can I meet you real quick? Okay? And then I ask her, uh, what are you up to right now? And that's, what that's referred to as is a logistical question. So I'm trying to assess the situation and find out what is going on. Like, is she headed home for the night? Is she going to meet people? Like, what exactly is going on? So I want to find the situation out, especially since she's alone by herself. I want to figure out what exactly am I dealing with? What exactly am I working with? Okay? So I ask her, what are you up to right now? She says, I lost my friends. Okay? So that's like a big indication that you kind of have an open window here to you know, suggest that the two of you should hang out. All right, so let's see what I do next. Are you waiting for all your friends? They left me, so. Oh, do they? Yeah. We're trying to figure out where to go. We live like four blocks away, we're gonna maybe go do Fireball. Do you drink Fireball? Now the next piece of this is I tell her that we live four blocks away. All right, so what that's doing is making, it's setting up things, because I'm gonna be asking her to come hang out with us, but it's setting up things so that it's an easy thing for her to comply with, okay? We live close, okay? So when you're in a nightclub or a bar, I advocate telling the girl, Okay, I only live like five blocks away, I only live like five minutes away. If it's the first half of the night, you're gonna say we should go have drinks and come back. Okay, if it's towards the second half of the night, you're gonna say we should go have drinks. It's really close, you know, it won't take that long to get there, blah, blah, blah. So, I tell her in this particular situation, we live four blocks away, we are going to go drink some Fireball. All right, so at this particular time when I was filming this, we were drinking Fireball whiskey all the time. Fireball is a type of whiskey. So without even skipping a beat, okay, I said, we're gonna go drink some Fireball. Do you like Fireball? Okay, now the, the key thing of why that's important, okay, is I'm not saying we're gonna go drink some Fireball. Would you like to come with us, yes or no? Okay, I'm not giving her like a decision to like back out of this. I'm saying, I wanna get like an easy yes. Okay, I've talked about this in other videos. You wanna get the easy yes, so you set the frame so you can move on and get her to comply with coming with you. So I say, we're gonna go drink some Fireball. Do you like Fireball? Now, let's see what happens next. I like Fireball. It's my roommate's birthday, we were thinking about going and doing Fireball and maybe going back out, I don't know. Do you wanna come drink with us? Okay, so she says she likes Fireball. So now we have a bunch of stuff on our side here. She lost her friends, okay? Her friends have, have left her, okay? I tell her we live close. We were thinking about going and drinking some Fireball. Turns out she likes Fireball. And then I say, do you want to come along and drink with us? Right, so that now I'm putting her more to a decision, but I've already got an easy yes and there's a lot of stuff in my favor. Now, typically what will happen in uh, an interaction at this point is she will give what's called objections. And those objections stem from a place of her wanting to be comfortable, her wanting to feel safe, her wanting to not be in like an awkward one-on-one -on -one situation, her wanting to make sure she can get a ride home, okay? Her wanting to like screen you to make sure you're not a weirdo or a creep. And I have identified 14 main objections. That's not the topic of this video, and she actually doesn't give any objections in this video because remember, it's the green light path. This is a very quick situation where she's agreeing to come back with me. But in a future video, I will cover those 14 main objections, okay? Which I usually reserve for my live training. But I'm going, to, I'm going to put those out there and teach you the optimal responses to give to each one of those. All right, so in this particular situation, I just say, we're gonna go drink the fireball. Turns out she likes it, so it's easy for her to comply to the next part. Would you like to come with us? Let's see what happens next. Do you to come drink with us? Yeah, I'm not doing anything, so might All right, as well. let's go, walk this way. Hey, come on. Okay, notice how the next piece is to lead, okay? She says, yeah, I'm not doing anything, so might as well. All right, that means green light, good to go. So now I say, all right, come on, let's go, come on. I put a hand on her back, I start moving. Okay, I tell my friends, let's go. Now it is my job on the walk back to just kind of banter, which is code word for spewing verbals, running my mouth. I want to keep the vibe up, I want to keep things fun. And now my next goals on this walk back are, first of all, I'm gonna to try to circumvent this 10 minute walk by suggesting that we take a cab, which you'll see in a moment. And I also need to start injecting physicality and sexuality, okay? And the reason for that is, you don't want to have this whole platonic information exchange the whole way back, because then when you get back to the apartment, things have not gone past the friendly level, they have not gone past the platonic level. So the odds of you having a sexual experience with her back at your apartment are going to be close to zero, okay? So it's your job on that walk back, which you normally would do in the interaction at the bar or nightclub, okay? But since this happened where she's on board to come with me very quickly, then there was no time to, to build all that up, but now I'll be doing it on the way home, as you will see. All right, so let's watch what happens next. These are my friends. 
Do you live downtown or what? No, I'm visiting from. Oh, I'm from the East Coast too. I'm from New York. Oh yeah. yeah. Note how I introduce my friends. The cameraman and there's another guy in the group. You don't want to just have like these people like walking along and it's like, you know, weird that they haven't been introduced and, and she doesn't know what, who the fuck they are. You want to like make things normal, all right? Don't just be like, okay, she's coming with me. So now just focus in on her. Hey, so meet my friends. These are my friends. She shakes one of their hands, okay? And then I'm just starting to give light small talk. Do you live downtown? She says she's visiting. So now we have another logistical piece of information. Okay, she said she's visiting from the East Coast. It, this video was filmed in California. Okay, she said she's visiting from the East Coast, so I'm mentioning how I'm from New York, which is where I'm originally from. So now we're bonding over that. But now I know that she is just in town visiting. She's not looking for a relationship, obviously, because she's just visiting. So now I'm gonna be taking that into account as I formulate what to do next. All right, so let's see how the walk back goes. I just moved to San Diego like two months ago. What part of you like it? I yeah, I fucking love yeah. it. Yeah. If you're from the East Coast, you just saw like the shitty snow weather and like all this fucking oh. garbage. Yeah, I was born in, you know Rochester is? I was born in Rochester and then. Uh, My family's from. Are they really? Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh shit. Not too Yeah, I went to, um, I went to RIT. There's like a or something right there, right? Uh, I don't know. Maybe. You don't even know? Oh, you, you didn't? I'm not from there. Oh, okay. Your family is like from a different spot in New York, but. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What are you doing? Uh, I work at you Okay, so keep in mind, nothing fancy is happening yet. It's just normal questions, okay? A lot of guys in the seduction community, a lot of coaches say, oh, don't ask boring interview questions, okay? On almost every interaction, I ask the girl where she's from, what she does, what kind of, you know, she's studying in school or she has a particular line of work, I ask about that. I think it's totally normal to bond over those questions. I ask those questions on dates as well. So what you've seen here is basically we're talking about the area we're from. I told her where I went to college. She told me where she's from, where her parents are from. And we're just, this is making, this is building comfort, all right? I haven't started any flirtation or sexuality. I'm not just like coming out of the gates with that. I'm building up a little bit of rapport and a little bit of comfort, okay? The job on the way home is just to keep your mouth running. Imagine if I let the conversation fall silent, she's gonna start getting weirded out. She might say like, oh, actually, I probably should go home. All right, you wanna just be com come across as normal without trying too hard to be normal and just have some light conversation, all right? And then you're gonna bring in the sexuality and the flirtation at some point, which you will see. And then what's like, what's like, what does it like cap out at? Like 120 or something? Yeah, that's not high. It's at that range. That's like saying my field too. It's like six parts out, but you want to walk or take a cab? <laughs> Do you feel like walking? Are your heels all, are you all sore? Right, like six blocks that way. I can walk. All right. Hey, let's cross this way. Note that we're about three minutes into the footage, about three minutes in since I walked up to her. And now I'm saying it's about six more blocks, but do you want to take a cab? All right, because keep in mind, I look at it kind of like a graph, right? So here's like, here's kind of like the, the vibe of the, of the conversation. Like as you have to walk longer and longer, or if we're in a cab for like 15, 20 minutes, like the, the vibe starts to like die out. Even if you're talking, you're basically like battling against time on, on the walk home or on the cab ride home. So she says she prefers to walk, not a big deal. All right, in this particular situation, we are actually only like six, seven blocks away from the house. If you live much further, at that point, you'd probably want to make some excuse, like, oh, I've been walking out all day, let's just call a cab, or let me just grab a cab, it'll only take a second. All right, that's why I made a note about her heels, like, oh, your, your heels are on, like, haven't you been walking around all day, like, aren't you a little tired? You kind of want to give them, like, that little extra push to agree to the cab, right? In this particular situation is totally fine. What's your ethnicity? Um, I'm half Chinese and half Chinese. Oh, really? I used to live in Beijing. Oh, yeah? How was it? Crazy. I was, like, six foot four, like, tall white guy. All the chicks were like, this tall. That was like a novelty, like, girls just like run up to me and be like, oh. Do they love American guys there? Yeah. Oh, interesting. I was at this club like on my birthday. I was there for my birthday. Like I was, sent, I used to work for IBM and they like sent me out there for a trip. Mm -hmm. And um, they, I went to this club for my birthday. What are you texting? Oh. And then uh, I was, the, the cab driver was like, oh, you need to go to the baby face. So I went in there and like... The baby face? It's called, the club is called baby face. It's fucking weird. <laughs> anyway. But I was like literally the only white dude in there. And it was like, there was like synchronized dancing going on and shit. Even though like they didn't like work for the club, it was just like people just like synchronized dancing. And I don't know, it's fucking weird. Like everyone's like super shy. <laughs> like the whole culture is like very shy, right? I don't know, I've never been. 
Very true. Are you Americanized Chinese? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you guys, you, look, you get Hispanic and Native American probably all the time. Yeah, I get Hawaiian. You almost even look like part Irish. I you am. Like part, I am part Irish. Oh, are you? Now, a common question I typically ask these girls is about their ethnicity. So, in this particular situation, I'm asking her ethnicity, she starts explaining it. I'm always just curious, and this girl looked like a, an interesting mix. I get Hawaiian. You almost even look like part Irish. I am, you like part, I am part Irish. Oh, are you? I yeah. really love the Irish. <laughs> Dude, I'm they're, like half, They're I'm my half people. Irish. <laughs> I'm like half Irish, I like love We cows. actually connect, like, you know. Boom, so this is the window where I see I can inject some physicality. Okay, so she says she's half Chinese, okay? I talk about my experience in Beijing, and I also talk about how I got sent out there when I was working for IBM. Now these are like little subtle, what they call demonstrations of higher value, which are demonstrating things in an indirect way. I'm not like, hey, did you know I traveled to this country across the world? Or do you know I used to work for like a Fortune 500 company and do important shit? No, I say, oh, I used to live in Beijing. IBM sent me out there, all right? Now that drops that I've traveled, that drops that I'm successful, that I work for professional companies, okay? That also builds more trust. Then she mentions that she's a quarter Irish because she had this girl had freckles and I mentioned that she actually looks a little bit Irish as well. And then I note when she says that she is part Irish, I note that I'm half Irish too. All right. And I put my arm around her. That's the, the physicality. So now we've broken out of the platonic friendly exchange and now I'm making it into a physical exchange okay, or adding in that physical component. And then note how she responds. Her verbal is, we actually connect, right? And she kind of says it like a little bit sexy. Like, she's like, we actually connect. We oh. actually connect. <laughs> how much Irish are you? Um, 25%, so a quarter. A quarter? Yeah. Wait, half Chinese, half quarter Irish. Yeah. <laughs> you just said it like once. You should tell Oh, really? Asshole. <laughs> <laughs> you asshole. No, it's like this like spider Even sense. What's the building called? Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, Is it right by the state? Like, oh, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, but she was just I know, he was, he was seeing this German girl. <laughs> Alright, so what happened after we got back? Um, we can't show that in the recording because it's illegal to film with inside of an apartment. Okay, so you can only, we have to stop the footage at the door each time. Okay, each time I go through these infield breakdowns, I'm gonna have to stop the footage at the door. I can't show you having sex with the girl either. That's all, <laughs> that's also illegal. Some guys are like, well, if we can't see that you banged her, like we, okay. I don't close all my polls. In this particular situation, I did bang this girl. So we went inside. The two friends of mine basically fucked off. They said they had stuff to do. I gave her the tour of the apartment, okay, which ended up in my bedroom. Got into a makeout, ended up having sex. She ended up sleeping over, okay. And then she left the next morning. She had texted her friends that night, like it's cool. Um, I have somewhere to stay for the night. Left the next morning and then I was able to see her one more time before she left town. Now to recap what happened there, this is called the green light path. So notice how to convince her to come back with me, it only took about 20 seconds because there was no objections. Typically there's gonna be a whole bunch, okay, in that list of 14 that I mentioned before. And I'll be covering those in a separate video, what the 14 main objections are and what the optimal responses are to each one. In this particular situation, there was no objections. There was no cock blocking, okay, because her friends weren't even there. And I didn't have to do all the stuff that you normally have to do to remove her from the bar or from the club because she was already on the street, okay? And we also ended up, you know, being about 10 minutes walk from my house. So once I, you know, set up how we were gonna go do such and such fun thing, she says she likes fireballs, so it's easier for her to come along. She agrees to come along. I build rapport on the way back. I cement value by having lived in London, living in Beijing, working for a successful company, DJing a cool, bunch of cool events all around the United States, I'm doing physicality things, I'm making sexual jokes, I'm building rapport, making things fun, okay? And that gets you back to the place, the mood is good, your value is high, you've done the sexuality piece, and that's it, okay? Now, it won't close every time, but those are the <laughs> ingredients, the recipe, so to speak, to make a lot of this happen, all right? 
Now, if for some reason her friends called or she had to leave or if she just wasn't into it at that time, I would take her phone number and then contact her to go have a sit down date the next day or the day after whenever she had free time next. I would build more value and rapport, invite her back again, and then it might go down at that point. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this was useful for you. I have tons more of these infield breakdowns coming. I wanna encourage everyone down below, please subscribe if you haven't already subscribed and click the bell button. That will give you a notification for every single new video I put out and I'm ramping up my production of videos. There's gonna be a new video every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So every weekday, the weekly YouTube live, that'll be on Sundays at 4 p.m. EST, 4 p.m. Eastern time, 1 p.m. PST and that'll be a one to two hour ask me anything. So that'll be your opportunity to interact with me, ask me questions, and I will be interacting and corresponding and looking at all the questions and answering them as fast as I can. So these videos will be engaging, they'll be fun. I'm gonna keep the, the content top notch, okay, better than anyone else in the niche, better than anyone in the industry. And I'm gonna be doing a lot of these cool breakdowns, giving you the inside secrets. I was holding back before on YouTube, not giving away all these amazing things, even though I was giving away a lot of really good stuff. But now it's just fucking value, Avalanche. Thank you again for watching. Like and subscribe below, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you. Some do it for the income, but we do it for the outcome. Some of us are active, while others just let their mouth run. No doubt, son, this is not just about fun. We will not be outdone by these cowards who shout scum.